I don't know about Europe, but in America, arcades died off fairly quickly in the late 90s and early 2000s. Whereas in Japan, they're still going to this day, seemingly still increasing in popularity instead of dipping in popularity. Where a video game company in Japan was making home console market games, they've now transitioned into sports equipment, bars, beer, coffee, athletic equipment, or pachinko, gambling, any number of other avenues of business like Capcom and Konami. And some companies like Sega and Taito still make arcade games to this day. And arguably that's how they make most of their money. Enter in Taito, a prolific developer in the 80s and 90s for arcade games and home console ports and home console games that they've made that were really fun, inventive, and addictive. They're still making arcade games to this day, or at the very least, still providing a platform for makers to make these arcade games. Enter in the Taito Type X and X2, essentially just PCs built on Windows XP up to Windows 7 architecture. Now granted, arcades have kind of always just been PCs going back even to the 80s, but even more so than then, they are now more than ever just a PC on the inside. Hi, my name is Brad, and today in Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to get the Taito Type X system games up and running in LaunchBox on your machine. I do want to give a forewarning. A lot of these games are actually available on platforms like Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, on discs that you can actually buy for your consoles. So while I will show you how to get these games up and running, but there is a way to support these developers who are making these games actively still to this day. So if there are Taito Type X or X2 games that you find interesting, like King of Fighters 13, for example, I know for a fact that you can actually buy that game on PSN. I actually own it on PSN, for example. It's also worth noting that these games do have minimal English or enough English that you can actually get through menus or figure out what's going on. But for the most part, these games are in Japanese from Japan intended to only be played in Japanese arcades. However, if you do want that Japanese arcade feel, this is definitely the way to do it. Back in LaunchBox, now I normally show you guys that I already have the platform imported here on the left. However, today's not quite so easy. Since the Taito Type-X isn't an emulator or a DOS program or a Scum VM program or anything like that, we can't easily import it into LaunchBox. Even when you go to Tools, Import, Windows Games, that doesn't even quite work all that much. The Windows Games option works, but we haven't implemented a feature where you can select a folder of EXEs or shortcuts and import them with the proper names and have it filter and pop into LaunchBox and then scan for metadata. And unless you own these games on Steam, the Steam Games Importer obviously isn't going to do you much good. So for the first time ever, I'm going to be using the Add button here in the bottom right of LaunchBox. Now you've probably seen this menu previously when you've edited a game in LaunchBox, but this is the first time I'm showing you guys how to manually add a game instead. Now, before I start showing you guys how to add games, there are two programs that are actually very beneficial with running these games. One program is called iRotate and it's used for I think kind of an obvious reason, but if you have a vertical oriented monitor or you have a vertically oriented game and it's not displaying properly, iRotate will help fix that for you very easily. Another program that will work very well if you want to run the game in a Windows mode type place or you need to be able to rotate it in a window or that sort of thing, then DXWind or DXWND is also a program that you would very much want to download. Both are free, should be found on SourceForge.net. This is where I found both of these versions and I downloaded them to my Taito Type X folder. Uh, now the games folder. I'm not going to tell you guys where you can find these games because it still goes against our policy of being able to share these things with you guys. But 
when you are looking for Taito Type X games, there are a few things that you need to keep an eye out for, and this is pretty much the only way that you're going to be able to play these games. You see all these bat files? Well, you need a config.bat, a game.bat, at least a minimum of these two. I've also found that all my games have a launcher.bat, and the TGM3bat, I believe, is specific to Tetris. Some games have more than others, so this one only has a game and a launcher.bat. This one only has a game and launcher.bat as well. So as long as you have those two, you are good to go for the most part, but you really also do want a config.bat as well. If you don't have a config.bat, type x underscore config. I did notice that some of these have this as well. Type x config. These will also work for our purposes as well. So let's take Tetris 3. This is the root folder for my Taito type x for my games. So we're going to copy this file path in Windows. Right down here where it says application path, we're going to hit browse. We're going to paste in the path here at the top. We're going to scroll down to the game that we want to import. So in this case, I'm going to import Tetris 3. I'm going to double click on the game.bat and it should automatically fill in the name based on the folder name. And then where it says configuration application path, I'm also going to select the config.bat just to make things easier. You don't need to include a configuration application path, but I kind of do to make things more simple. We can go ahead and try searching for metadata and see if anything comes up, but only Super Tetris 3 for the Super Nintendo shows up. Now the Taito Type X is in our database, at least under the arcade platform. However, we know that most people don't want to import under the arcade platform. So the scrape as feature will be coming in the future. But since we are adding these games one by one, you should be able to type in arcade and click the search button and either more options will come up or when you did your first import, the proper options should come up. Unfortunately, with our database, though, you may not have any options. Wikipedia may not have it. Emu movies may not have it. it uh, it's very, very much hit or miss when it comes to the Taito Type X. We do know that we need to create a specific platform for it, and we do know that there are games in the Taito Type X or X2 classification that do would need to be moved over to it. But for right now, manually scraping the database and trying to find the game is probably your best bet. Now, I can fill in the rest of this information if I really wanted to or add a quick image uh, by clicking here and then browsing to where we have our images uh, stored. We can import that way or we can drag and drop onto this little image box here. And then whatever image we have pulled up, if it's in the wrong category, we just click this little box here and select what it actually is. So there are ways to import all this information manually. I've just, of course, it's all manual. It's not automatic, mostly like we have it usually happen. So on the left here, Taito Type X is now a new platform. So let's take King of Fighters 12, for example. If I hit search for metadata, even though I don't have a platform there, search for metadata, quite a few more options pop up. King of Fighters 12 from Wikipedia pops up, but also the King of Fighters 12 arcade. Now, like I said, this is what the Taito Type X game is. It's still classified under arcade, but we obviously want it under the Taito Type X platform. So we get the front and clear logos for that. So we're going to download all three of these files, and then we're going to change the platform from arcade to Taito Type X, and it should automatically fill in for you. LaunchBox will refresh, and there you go. And then, like I was saying, the box front and clear logo are here. So if you wanted to manually import them, you can also change the classification and import them all you want. When adding games, if you do accidentally put it in the arcade platform, either click your arcade platform or go to the all section in the top right in the search, type in the name of the game that you just accidentally put in the wrong category. 
edit the game and under platform type in the platform that you would like and then it should automatically move on back over to the proper category okay let me run through this process one more time for you guys because i have a feeling that i may have not explained it perfectly i want to make sure that you guys get this because this is a little bit more complicated than just using the regular importer and you may notice that some of the art on these is for like the playstation 3 or windows uh we'll go over that right now so let's take giga wing generations as an example so we'll select the game.bat again we'll search for metadata two options came up giga wing generations which is probably misspelt so probably should actually go edit that but we'll click on it now just for the example all of the information has filled in and it might be a little off like the developer the play mode obviously the platform is off the publisher is off the rating is probably off too because this is probably from japan versus the usa but but if we download images and media it actually has options for video and screenshots and box art and all that good stuff. So while it may not be completely accurate, if you would like some media for the game, as this has been re-released several times in different locations, this is a good way to do it. And then all we need to do is rename the platform to the title type X, press enter. And there we go, it's been added. So that's what I did with the Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Battle Fantasia. I selected the PlayStation 3 categories, or just renamed the platform. Uh, so the metadata might be a little off, but if you would rather just play the game right now, this is a good way to do it. Now, obviously, once we have a Taito Type X specific category in our systems, in our, in our, in our database, this should get resolved. But until then, this is the best way that I believe that you can do it. Right click a game and configure. And if you set the game configuration path, like I showed you, uh, then this option will be there. If not, go to the type x config.exe or the config.bat file, and this will pop up. It's gonna ask you a series of questions. For example, is this a Mahjong panel? And if you have a Mahjong game, you would know what this is. But uh, no, this isn't a Mahjong game. This is Tetris game. Four-way joystick. Now, uh, joysticks and, and, and thumbsticks and even D-pads can do diagonals. Instead of, up, just, instead of just up, down, left, right, you can move diagonally. And in fighting games, this is a very big thing. You need those diagonals. However, in Tetris, uh, this will be a four-way joystick. For those fighting games, you would press N for no. In this case, we're going to press yes. This is a four-way joystick. So then it's going to ask you if this is Tetris. Now, this option only pops up if you press yes on four-way joystick. So yes, this is this is Tetris. Is this a low-res monitor? No, it is not. Search a scratch drive remap path. We're going to press enter. But really quickly, right after this, it's going to start asking you to input the buttons for your controller. And they are timed inputs. So that's why I'm saying now before I, I continue. It's going to ask you a series of questions and you're going to press the equivalent buttons on your controller up down left right button one through six start coin and then it's going to go into uh controller or player two and then it's going to ask you for a test button and an exit button the escape and the test buttons are going to be buttons that are going to be put on my keyboard Player two buttons are also going to be put on my keyboard because I don't have a second controller plugged in, but you can use two controllers. The rest of my, 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 my keys are going to be associated with my PS4 controller that I've got plugged in with input mapper turned on and installed on my PC. So on this menu, we're just going to press enter and then it's going to ask you for up. We're going to press up on the D-pad, down on the D-pad, left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad, X, circle square triangle l1 r1 start select or back and then l3 for service button and then we're going to press up down left right on the controller on the keyboard z x c a s d enter shift q t t backspace 
Now, I've set those as a guess, but those not may not be exactly the buttons that you would need in-game. So, if you're playing Blaze Blue and you need your low kick on square, but you've accidentally just set it to L1, go back in, uh, know what you set to L1, and instead set that to square. Uh, try and figure out your controls, and then you're good to go. So, let's double-click Tetris, and it should go ahead and punch in a full screen. There we go. We know what button we've set to give us credits. That was our share back select button on our controller. We're going to press start on the controller. And then there we go. So it is it is in Japanese a little bit, but for the most part, you can get around uh, with mo mostly in English. So that's a good thing. And I also forget, I forgot my damn uh, initials for a second. And then there we go. We're into an arcade version of Tetris. And the buttons actually seem to work. Ooh, I got a little bit of a addicted to Tetris there for a second. But there you go. That is pretty much how you add the Taito Type X to the launch box and get to playing some interesting Japanese-only arcade games. Remember, a lot of these games that you can purchase versions of, like Tetris does exist on PS4 and PC and 3DS. And these other games do exist on PS2, PS3, 360, Steam. So please keep that in mind. There is a game that you truly want to play uh, with updated feature sets, more characters, better graphics even. That these do exist on more modern machines or more contemporary ways to be able to purchase and play these things other than this way. And these, some of these games may be really hard to find. So your best option may actually still yet be to just buy the games on the respective stores. My name is Brad, and if you guys liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials and shows in the future. If I didn't explain anything in this tutorial as well as I could have, or you need a little bit of an exp extra explanation, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Jason and I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have on anything that you heard or saw in today's tutorial. If you like the sound of my voice and I helped you guys out, the link to my channel is in the description below. I do lots of gaming content on my channel, so I would appreciate it if that is your cup of tea to give me a subscribe and watch some of my videos as well. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.